<laughs> we are joined today by the esteemed Mr. Bob Burmeister of Mr. Bob's Under the Bridge. Legendary. Legendary. The legend lives. You th everybody thought he was just a ghost because he kept blowing us off for interview requests. Right. But, right. but he really does exist. It's like the Wizard of Oz. He really does exist. The man behind the curtain is now in front of the camera and he's joining us today. Welcome, Bob Burmeister. We got him. Thanks. Happy to be here, man. Well, nice we're, you. we're happy to. We, we spread the word about Mr. Bob's every day. But Thank you're, you. you're the you're the lead off. You're the number number one thing we lead off with. That's and true. Like, and we like to keep current. So, but before we do that, Bob, I have had people say, "What is Mr. Bob's?" Can you start with that for us, please? You want the long version? I mean, yeah. Well, it be a three hour gig. <laughs> no, no. I have us, like two terabytes on my SD card. Give, give, give oh. us like a two minute version <laughs> of of Mr. Bob's. How it? You know, what is it? First of all, what is Mr. Bob's? How how would you define um, it? We are a nonprofit outreach that helps um, the homeless population and people that are in need in several counties that surround us. Okay. And how did you get started in this, Bob? How did you start it? It's Mr. Bob's for a reason. Yeah. Oh, boy. This is going to be a long one. Um, Perfect. So, so actually, when I was younger, um, I grew up in the city of Milwaukee and um, as kids, uh, you know, we were very blue collar. We were poor and not, not poor, but, you know, we were, my parents both had to work. Mm -hmm. So in the um, summer, uh, when we weren't in school, they would ship us off to the Boys and Girls Club down on Brady and Fratney, which I love to this day, even though it's not there anymore. I always go pay homage. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, we had to walk across the Holton Street Bridge. And interesting thing was, and I was, you know, young, 9, 10, 11, whatever it was. And, but I always had, there was a mystery to me when I would see these, um, you know, I call them our friends, our homeless friends. Mm -hmm. I was always like shocked. You know, what are you doing? How do you do this? Why are you doing it? You know, mm -hmm. so over time, you know, over a summer or two summers, you know, it was the same people every week. Um, I started bringing them water and peanut butter and jelly sandwiches if I could steal them out of the pantry. And just, <laughs> and, and, you know, even at that age, I, you, you know, I was so intrigued by really, I mean, yeah. I, you know, I never thought people lived like that, I guess. Um, so, you know, that just kind of, th that's what I think keeps coming back, but really what happened um, when it hit me over the head was we used to um, volunteer at Cross Lutheran church. Um, it's an inner city church on uh, 16th and Walnut. Mm -hmm. um, nothing but, uh, you know, compassion and caring and love for people that are in need. And part of the volunteer there was that we had two choices. We could work in the kitchen, which, you know, how good I am at that. You know, they didn't like me mixing salad with my bare hands. Uh, <laughs> so, or, or you could be out in the audience and serving and doing whatever. Yeah. I tended to drift towards the audience more because there was homeless people there that I knew from the bridge, believe it or not. Oh, sure. So, and, that, and that, you know, think about that, how long that was. It was a very, very long time, 20 years, whatever, but they were still out there. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I think over the year, you know, it was bad. It was in August. I'll never forget this. It was a hot August day. We had just finished up our volunteer there. And I'm driving home and something hit me in the head and said, you got to do more. I have no clue who it was. I don't care who it was. It was just do more, Bob. There's more to be done. And it took me like four or five months to put together what that meant. And what it meant was we have to serve others, right? I mean, at the end of the day, that's our mission. I'll stand by that uh, until the day I'm, you know, my ashes are dusted over Kosciuszko Park. And, um, <laughs> but, you know, it's to serve others. And, Right away, it came back to me, wow, you know, we have a terrific problem, um, not only in the city of Milwaukee, but Ozaki and Washington County. Yeah. Um, we have people that are living on the streets that shouldn't be. And so my thought was, you know, housing is very difficult. There's no question about that. Um, it's always a challenge. We're successful sometimes, most of the time we're not. But my thought was, let's give them what they, they need to survive, right, for the week. Um, and so Sue and I <clears throat> put six backpacks together. We went to Shopko, bought every pack, backpack they had, which was six, believe it or not. Um, we filled them with, you know, 
and it was around Christmas time. So we filled them with hats, gloves, you know, hygiene, um, mittens, and some cookies and candy and all of that stuff I had begged for people to donate. Um, and they did. I went out and I'll never forget this. My first stop was down on like 22nd and Fond du Lac. And I knew the population, you know, there was a population down there. And this is no lie in five minutes, all six backpacks were gone. And I didn't have enough because there was more people that wanted them. Yeah. And that broke my heart because mm -hmm. I said, you know, I made a rule right there that I will never, ever have that situation happen again where I had to leave people stranded. And I shouldn't say stranded, but without what I was able to give. Mm -hmm. So I went on this mission and I started talking to people and, you know, hey, you got to donate. Give me, you know, and I, of course, where do you start? You know, it's like the old insurance salesman. Mm -hmm. Hey, you know, mom, dad, uh, aunt, uncle, brother, sister, uh, you know, uh, kids, give me your shit. Sorry, Jack. No, no, that's, no, that's actually yeah. what you're now. You truly have. Uh, <laughs> you, you'll truly be accepted if you it throw a like few. A, F, uh, if you add a few f bombs, you'll be in, Bob. It's like a Jewish <laughs> wedding. Once the husband steps on the glass, you just stepped on the glass. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, so I mean, um, again, we started out with those six backpacks. We worked out of our garage. Um, our garage became this warehouse of that we couldn't even put our cars in and we did all of our sorting by ourselves and we did all the packaging of hygiene by ourselves. And it really came down to after going out and I did a lot of bird dogging back in those days where I was, you know, crawling under fences, uh, getting into vacant warehouses, um, you know, going under the bridges, uh, parks, you know, wherever I felt there was, you know, there was a population that was in need. That's where I went. And this was not at two o'clock in the afternoon. This was at two o'clock in the morning because wow. that were, is when you could catch, you know, most of the folks that were hunkered in. And you know what, if they were sleeping, I left them alone, but I always left them a little care package with, you know, with, you know, with a card in it or something. Yeah. So, you know, fast forward to today, and Jack, you've been down there, you know, many times. Um, we serve, you know, late. I missed last week, but they said we have over 200 people there last week, which is, it. it's shocking to me that we have, you know, here we are again um, mm -hmm. with the numbers going up. Mm -hmm. And I, I think for me, what I get out of this is I've made so many friends on the streets that depend on us every week. Um, and, you know, I made friends that we talk on a regular basis. I mean, it, they know if they're struggling, they know who to call. <clears throat> so at the end of the day, that's, you know, that's kind of the short synopsis of it. I mean, there's tons of stuff in this journey that happened in between and um, some good, some bad. Yeah. Um, we've had a lot of people that have passed on and, you know, from different things, overdoses, you know, whatever in the river. Mm -hmm. River is popular, you know, um, but at the end of the day, that's why we're, you know, we do this for a reason. We do it to serve. Yeah. And you do it very distinctly and, and you do a wonderful job. Bob, on a, on a weekly, I mean, it changes. Your needs ch seem to change weekly. Yeah. We need this, like a, the, mo the most recent um, – you know what I saw was for baby and toddler clothing. Yes. And when the seasons change, there's there's some things. What do you need? It's right now, it is the end of May. What are some of your biggest needs right now? Our biggest need right now is pants. Hmm. Jeans, like, pants. Um, we never, we run out, and I shouldn't say, we run out of sizes every week. Okay. Now we can most of the time, you know, suggest, hey, if you're a 36, take a 38 and put a belt on or put a rope around it or something. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, pants for some reason, and I think we all know it as, as men is, you know, this pair of jeans that I have on, I bet you I've had for two years. Mm -hmm. You know, we, don't, mm -hmm. we just don't get rid of them. Right. Um, so that's where we struggle uh, with, you know, men's pants, women's pants. Um, we, we are, you know, I would always ask for socks, but uh, we um, had the opportunity to become a partner with Bombas, mm -hmm. Bombas however you pronounce it. And mm -hmm. Every year, we'll be getting 5,000 pairs of socks from them. Oh, nice. Wow. Um, Fantastic. That's about maybe three quarters of a year for us. 
Um, but you know, we, you know, we always get socks donated. So mm -hmm. yeah. um, what, any sizes for the pants, men's, women, do you, do you know, offhand? I think the most common men's pants that we're always looking for are 34 and 36s. Okay. Um, other than that, I don't know women's sizes. So, okay. All right. Um, and I, I was, last time I was there, I was on shoe and boot detail and, uh, shoes are all this time of year. Wild. Shoes, yes. Any kind of uh, slightly broken in tennis shoes or something, or for whatever reason, um, absolutely, they, they people are, go crazy for them. And should I'm crazy, but definitely, yeah, they you, go crazy. Come yeah, on, say, say All it right. they go nuts. <laughs> you you also serve food. I mean, right. how, how does that get generated, Bob? Do people through monetary donations? How do you do that? No, this has been a very unique uh, partnership that we've had for a long time. Um, this is many, many years ago. We um, were we partnered with Bal uh, Bartolatas, hmm. and Bartolatas has two um, cafeteria style that they manage. Mm -hmm. One's at Cole's Corporate, and the other one is down in downtown Milwaukee somewhere. Hmm. Well, <clears throat> I got to know Jen Bartolata a little bit through you know a variety of people, and and she was telling me about this food that's left over, and they they don't know what to do with it. And I said, well we'd be happy, you know, to take that because it's all prepackaged and, you know, you get anything from sushi to, you know, carrots, you know? Mm -hmm. yep. So um, what we did, um, I have another very good friend and partner. It's called just one more ministry and they're a food rescuer. Maybe you've heard of them. Mm -hmm. um, I think they rescued something like 2 million pounds of food last year. Wow. So what what we did because you know first of all you gotta understand we're totally volunteer operations so you, you know sometimes it gets a little rough to get volunteers to run here and run there and pick up food here and pick up food there mm -hmm. that we partnered with um jam just one more ministry they pick up the food for us they get it ready for us but then they also you know because they're a food rescuer they have to report to the to the state right but they, so they get that poundage or that amount of food uh, that gets reported to state. Now, I don't know how that works. I mean, it's probably, you know, if you rescue two million pounds, you get some break on your taxes. I, I don't know how that works, but it's been, I've known Chris Capper down there for, gosh, for ages, for ages. Cool. So Excellent. So it's all different people from all over. Yeah. I mean, a hand. yeah, I mean, it's, it, it's amazing to me. And I, and I tell this story when I'm doing talks and things like that. If you look at, you know, Mr. Bob's this little spider, and it starts out as this little spider web, right? And the branching that has come from it is just, it's, I, I, I can't even fathom. I'm overwhelmed half at a time, you know, with the people that have jumped in and, and helped us and um, that became partners of ours. And uh, it, I, I just, I, you know, again, I'm, I'm humbled. I'm really humbled by that. That uh, humble uh, thing actually leads me to a question that I think a lot of people would have because you've seen both, I'm sure, like you said, good and not so good outcomes. How do you keep optimistic? How do you keep driven? I mean, it's because uh, yeah, it, I would think you're going to have good weeks and bad weeks. And it, I would think you, you must hit a wall. You know, um, I, I currently see you as a Marvel or DC superhero myself, but I, <laughs> but I must assume that you he, hit a wall. He's a geek, <laughs> so he sees everybody. In <laughs> everyone's, in everyone's a costume hero. <laughs> <laughs> everyone's got a cape and tights. Or, or a villain. <laughs> you know, here's the thing. Um, and, and I tell all new volunteers this, Jack, maybe you've heard it, maybe you haven't. I don't do the speeches anymore on Saturday morning because it takes me an hour to do the speech and then we're late and everything else. But um, my thing is for anybody that comes aboard with us that's new um, is all you have to do when you come to the park and serve is open your hearts, have some compassion and engage. Um, if you do those three things, um, and make sure that our friends know that when they're walking out of that park, that they know somebody cares about them and um, will be there every week, no matter what. Uh, that's how I make it through. Mm -hmm. That's how I make it through. Now, I've gone through some down times. You know, I lost a very, very good friend of mine um, to a heroin overdose. And, you know, those are the ones that kind of put it in front of you, you know, and all of a sudden you're going like, oh, my God, why am I doing this? Right. Yeah. But mm -hmm. I know why I'm doing this. I'm doing this to serve. 
And the other thing I'm doing this is to, we have such a sense of community just within our organization, as far as our volunteers and everything. No question. We've, we've built this community that is unbelievable. I mean, seriously, I, I go out, like I'm at the, I'm at the uh, HQ tonight and, you know, it's tonight's sorting night mm -hmm. and we must have 20 people out there. I mean, wow. it just, it just blows my mind. Um, so, you know, I think people buy in because of who we are. I mean, and what we stand for. Huh. Um, we don't need any flair and all that. We, you know, we don't need awards. We don't need any of that crap. All, all we need to do is just make damn sure that, you know, when we're out there on the streets that we're serving the people that are in need. Are, it, are there typically, Bob, uh, certain things you need help with? Like you mentioned to me last time, you're looking for, are you looking for a truck driver if someone wants to do that? Or always. Location? Always we're, looking we're for all, people? We're always looking for volunteers. Um, you, you know, there's so many different facets to this right now where people can fit in. Um, you know, the the kids play a big role in our, our organization. Um, I think, Jack, you probably know, but um, mm -hmm. we uh, developed about five years ago youth board members where um, they're, uh, they're assigned or, you know, to our board. Um, they have full, they have full rights, you know, voting rights, and they're, they're just like a regular board member is, but we challenge them with, you know, the engagement part and getting to know the population. And, um, and I don't mean this in any disrespect. Um, most of them are from this area. And I tell them, you know, you guys are living in a bubble out here, man. Mm -hmm. When you come, you're going to find out, you know, what it's like to be uh, on that front line. Yeah. And just remember, all you got to do is talk to them. That's all you mm -hmm. got to do. Yeah. Yep. Um, it's amazing. Um, I would say also, we say at least two or three times a week, Bob, if you are not comfortable going to the park, you can help sort. Yeah. If, if, if you want to, I mean, it's right here in Ozaki County. You never yeah. have to leave the county. Yeah. If you if you want to see what it's like to do the park, volunteer. And there are, Bob, you, you have, how many people do you say is on a team on a Saturday morning? How many? Volunteers. You mean as far as core? core yeah, people? yeah. Um, I would say on Saturday mornings we probably have eight, most of the time eight to ten core volunteers that are there every week. Um, maybe not every week, but I mean they're there on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. um, and then you know, of course, they're the directors when it comes to taking somebody under their wing and, yep. and you know explaining the program and what to do and sure. um the beauty of that is again we're building a community people yeah. we don't even know are coming to volunteer um but they're coming back you right know, i think they drank the kool-aid or something but they drank the kool-aid all right yeah. and just in case i, I mean, think they're pushing you, me a little bit jack i don't know uh they should be <laughs> um you also have a security person just in for just in yeah. case i mean yes. so i mean it's it's a safe environment yeah and and it's, and um you you give out instructions before so you know what you know what to do if you don't know what to do someone one of the eight core people or even other volunteers will help you figure it out and anything you do as long as you do it with the right spirit it's yeah. not wrong i mean right. that's that's the thing you can't make and, a mistake down there you can't I mean, you really can't you can't and at by if you show up at 7 45 by 9 15 you will have lifted your own spirits up selfishly for if it doesn't lift your spirits up for 48 hours you're i don't know who you are yep. but it's, it is right. a fantastic experience i highly recommend it for everyone Thank um, you. and and uh just give something not everybody can give money not everybody can give no, time you, you can usually give something there's that's not our expectations, right? I mean, right. Uh, time is time is very valuable. I get mm -hmm. that. I'm always amazed at these kids that are on our on our board that you know give us Saturday up. You, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? These, mm -hmm. these are high school kids, right? And and you're oh. out of there by mid morning. It doesn't matter. I mean, you're not, you're not talking about a day. You're only in Milwaukee. It's only a half hour drive down. Right. It's no big deal. And so, you're out there 52 weeks out of the year, right? I mean, there's there's oh, no yeah. yeah. So I oh, mean, yeah. yeah. You should come so down you, when it's like 25 below. That's that's when it's fun. I've heard good things. <laughs> yeah. When and you can sign up on the Mr. Bob's website, Mr. Bob's under the bridge .org. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Um Bob, do you are you guys do you have like a presence in the parades? I know um no. some you think if there is something you want us to put out there, Bulldog and, and AJ and I are gonna be in the parade this year. So we'll if you got some message you want to do, you want to have a bucket oh. for donations or whatever, think about it. 
Yeah, let us know. That'd be let cool. Us, let us yes. know if we can. Which help. led me to another question for you, Bob. Is there anything, even on a broadcast sense, that we can do for you, or if you think of something in the future, let us know because, you know, uh, while we are not giving the Today Show or Good Mar- Good Morning America a run for their <laughs> money, we we do okay in the mornings. We get uh, some eyes on our show throughout Ozaukee yeah. County. So I mean, we're happy to. If there's anything coming up, just. Yeah, in the loop. Uh, yeah, I'll, I, I, you know, I certainly can let Jack know. You know, if he ever Perfect. responds to, I, you know, when yeah, I I'm really bad at that. Yeah. Um, Bob, if if you want other people from your organization to come on, that's cool too. Yeah, Anybody that can. So, you know, I think uh, it would be, be really great if at one point you would have like uh, maybe a Sherry who runs the Thursday night sorting here. Yeah. Um, she's Anytime. a fantastic lady. She's one of the oldest volunteers we have, not age wise, but. Um, Most experienced. Know, she put up with you the longest. 16 years we've been doing this. Job. Oh, my God. Wow. Amazing. And her husband, what's his? I'm sorry, I don't know his Phil. name. Phil. He yep. is amazing. I see him every Thursday night. He is there as well. Yep. yep. But it's funny. You meet these people. I we, I was down a couple weeks ago with, with on a Saturday, and all of a sudden I see this this guy pulls up in the truck, and I know that guy. And then um, I see a woman is with him. And I said, I've seen her, too. That's and fine. What, yeah, it was uh, Dave and Les, yeah. And they're like, hey, I know you from somewhere. Do I know you? You know, and it was one of those things. You you, you know a lot more people than you think you know, too. Right. So it, it, and you get to know them better. So right. it's all cool. Um, another question before we wrap up here, Bob, I have to ask, what um, do you have any larger plans for the future? Is there some, you know, game plan for next year? Is there any kind of expansion thing or any extra things? You yeah, know, there's, there's a couple things on the table right now. Um, I will share with you that... Um, we are going to um, we are going to hire an executive director. Mm. Um, we we are putting together um, the process right now and the, the, you know everything that goes with it. Um, it's going to be to start out with it's going to be a part time position, mm-hmm. uh, twenty to twenty five hours a week. So if you know anybody, let us know. Um, our we do have a, a long term plan of. Um, buying our own building and, mm. you know, and, and that means a lot of things. It could mean something like buy a building and let's have a laundromat in it for our friends. So, sure. Sure. Um, you know, we're still, we're still, we have a committee that's on that. We're very, um, right now it's just thinking out loud is really what it comes yeah. down to. Um, I can see this organization at some point um, doing that, affording it. You know, we're, pretty much, um, you know, we don't get government grants. We don't get, you know, we're pretty much privately funded. No. Um, so it's going to take a while, but you know, it's the same thing like with the shower trailer. You yeah. know, I told the board in, in August of 18, I was going to get a shower trailer and they told me I was nuts. And in August of 19, we launched it. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's people, it's, it's just reaching yeah. out. It's not hawking for money. It's not yeah. as it's just talking about the organization and what we do. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. Well, we're here for you. Uh, we'd yeah. love to have you here to talk about it anytime. Yeah, yeah and that's and that's not the shower thing. wasn't why they said you were nuts. They just think you're nuts. That just <laughs> that just go, that just goes. With, I mean, that, I, that's consistent. Yeah, the shower I, will do, but just I would have to tend to agree with you, Jack, <laughs> because you know working full time and trying to do this. There's got to be a little yeah. bit loose up here, right? You're, you're an amazing man, and and Miss Mrs. Sue, whom you mentioned, is an amazing woman she too. Is. So to put up with this amazing man, <sighs> yes, it's a lot. It's a yeah. lot. Oh, <laughs> you, you think? <laughs> I'm exhausted. I've only been here for 20 minutes. <laughs> well, you're lucky you weren't on four minutes early. He's like, he gets on all of a sudden. I get this text. Let's roll. I'm like, what? <laughs> I like that. Take charge, General Patrick. Oh, God. Oh, boy. Speaking of, we were, gonna, uh, we, we were on the air at the time. Uh, I know you had something, a recent uh, donation yes. to your office. Bring, bring like your sign. Bring Where's your, your sign, sign you showed uh, us? That yeah, from yeah. Quinn? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah for Quinn, from Quinn to Tom. We, we weren't uh, from Quinn actually, to uh, recording at that point, but now we are. Look there you that. go. There we go. All the cool cats have one of these. Oh. <laughs> Very cool. That's now, there's some effort with all the, the that's fantastic. man. That's fantastic. <laughs> man. It's beautiful. It is. Very yeah, cool. it is. Cool. That's an amazing family. The Natalies yeah. are an really? amazing family. Yeah. Really, really cool. Had them, the, had them on the show a few weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, when yeah. We had our, uh, ours in yeah. the house here. So cool. great stuff. Well, Mr. Bob, it's obviously a pleasure talking to you. And uh, thanks um, for having me, you guys. Any t- anytime. It wasn't okay. easy. Think about. Think about the Fourth of July parade. Let us know if we can, if we can do something for you. Anything, okay. you know, that'd yeah. be great. Cool. All, All right. right. All right. Cool. Carry All on, right. sir. Thanks for everything you All do. Right. We'll talk to you Thank soon. You. Thanks, Thanks.